For 10 years, we've not done social housing, but things are about to change. Many people have got a misconception when it comes to HMOs and rooms. They think about poor quality bed sits, but actually we've proven over the last 10 years that that is not necessarily the case by providing high quality accommodation for people that appreciate it, working tenants that are paying a premium. But we've not actually done the same thing in social housing. We've been focusing on that sector, but things, as I said, now are about to change because we're about to make our impact in this sector. So let's talk about what we're doing in this house and how we're going to make a change. If you're here for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain. I've been in business about 30 years and 15 of those years is been in property and property investing. And on this channel, I use my time, skill and experience to help you get further faster in your property investing journey. Today, we're here at this property with my business partner, Idas, and we're gonna talk about why we're getting involved in social housing. What's the difference that we're gonna make? This is a four bedroom HMO. We picked up the keys just a couple of days ago. And right now what we've done is just clear out all the furniture is piled outside at the front, as you can see, waiting to be collected. And IDAS is on his way here now. He's gonna run through a checklist with me of all the work that we need to do to get this property ready because we've got the tradespeople starting work on it tomorrow. Hi, Saj. Hi, yes. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, nice to see this place finally cleared out. Pretty yeah. Good. This used to be a student HMO. In fact, we're not that far from Birmingham University. However, the whole area and the HMO market has been going through somewhat of a change. Yes, it has. Um, I think the, 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 the current area, even though it's quite close to the university, is actually not quite close enough. Uh, what we find with all the student purpose-built blocks around the universities, um, all the students want to kind of be on the campus more. They don't want to really be traveling out too far out. And the property is a little bit dated, which gives us a good opportunity to actually repurpose it now. Yes, these sofas have been a little while, so it's getting a little bit tired. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to maybe repurpose this to a different use, hence social housing. So, so we'll keep on referring to social housing, but maybe it's worth explaining to the viewers what that actually is. Yeah, absolutely, good point. So when we talk about social housing, social housing really uh, as, is quite a broad term and there's many different sectors uh, within it. And generally speaking, the person living in the house won't be paying rent out their own pocket. It's funded by the government, it comes out of the public purse. So there might be supported living, assisted living. So in this particular property, we're, we're focusing on a specific sector of, uh, of people that are living here. Yeah, so we're gonna be looking more at uh, people who potentially encountered domestic abuse or maybe have been homeless. So we're not really working with kind of ex-offenders and things like that. It's gonna be kind of lower risk category of, of, of tenants that we're gonna to try to accommodate here. Yeah, because that could be quite a broad range. It could be, for example, uh, somebody that's made, um, uh, uh, you know, come out of prison, they, they need some support and accommodation uh, as they come out of prison. It could be uh, ex-drug habits, as you mentioned. So there's many, many different sectors uh, within the social housing space. But one of the key things also with this type of accommodation, it's not just about providing the accommodation, but also providing some kind of support and coaching to the individual to help them get back on their feet and get back and up and running again. So running these houses in this way isn't actually our area of expertise. So what we have done is we've partnered with a, another operator who's going to be carrying out all the support element for, for these properties. So we're kind of coming in here providing the houses and, uh, and the facilities and our partner company is going to be looking after all the day-to-day -day operations and making sure the houses are run smoothly and the support is provided to the people who are going to be living here. 
As we also mentioned earlier, there's a checklist that we're going to run through in a moment. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because we're going to talk about exactly what we're going to do to the property to get it ready for the operator to take it on. So in order uh, for us to be able to do all that work, we've got to understand what the needs are for that particular company. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel as well and enable the notification bell so you're notified when releasing new videos. In fact, if you'd like to see this particular house once it's finished and ready, before we hand it over to the operator, make sure you put a comment in the comment section below to let us know. And if enough people ask, we'll come back and do another video as a completed house. So let's go on through now and talk about the actual work that we need to do at the property. Generally speaking, the house is actually in quite good order. The kitchen is nice and modern. It's been recently fitted, nice glossy finish. It's got the handleless doors. And we've got two bathrooms that were recently refurbished and fitted as well. So it's got the kitchen and two bathrooms. So, you know, it's uh, the bulk of it is there. The students are quite happy here. So what, what we're gonna run through and change now in the property, I guess? Yeah, so actually, as you say, you know, it has the main things in there are actually quite good and in good order and probably haven't been breathed too, too long ago been uh, renovated. The main thing we've got to look at is the compliance side. So for example, the fire doors are a little bit shabby, they're not closing properly. Uh, so we need to look at like, actually, we're going to be refitting all the fire doors in this building. Um, another thing we're going to be doing is going to be fitting a new fire alarm system, putting in emergency lights and making sure it's all up to the latest fire regulations. Um, other things we're going to have to do is we're going to do a bit of painting Around, just kind of sorting things out we have all new furniture coming in as well and once we get it all set up and kind of ready almost to the moving point we're gonna get RSL to come out and do an inspection to pass it off as well and it'll be ready to go then for the operator yeah, so the RSLs or the, uh, the Racial Social Landlord, the Housing Association, these are the people that are sort of oversee this type of accommodation. The funding will come through them, so it's quite important that they have a say in what happens. But before that actually even happens, there's gonna be a number of documents and certificates that we need to prepare that you'll run through in a moment. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because we'll give you a list of all that documentation that we're gonna run through as well. So once the property is finished, it will hand over to our partners who will then operate it on a day-to-day -day basis and run the property from there. Right, so this is actually one of the four bedrooms. This is uh, one of the largest, actually, this is the largest bedroom in the, in the house. They're all very well proportioned, so they're gonna make a lovely, good social house because of the size of the, the bedrooms here. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a great house. But you know, we've, we've not been involved in social housing before. We've stayed quite niche in terms of what we're doing. So over the last year, last 10 years even, you know, we have hundreds of rooms that we manage uh, or we own within Birmingham and the surrounding areas. And that's really been to professional tenants, it's been to working tenants, and that's been our sector. It's about, it's about narrowing down on that and really specializing and mastering that particular area of the business which we believe that we have so the reason you know we've not been involved in social housing is because it's a completely different model we might still be providing rooms in a house but that's where the similarities end everything else is very different the support aspect the payment aspect um, you know how you prepare the houses the type of people that we're living in in them the management all this is very different and this is why we've not rushed into this we looked at it a number of times we looked at setting up infrastructures to do this particular uh, type of uh, business if you like but we've just not felt it's been right until recently we found a partner with very similar values to us which is not just about milking these properties to get the most money you can out of them which is unfortunately what many people do they don't really think about there's people living in here and they've got needs you need to look after but we believe these partners we're working with now really understand that philosophy and align with our values so we're really looking forward to working with them and growing this business so hey look you know if you've got property in Birmingham whether it's property you want to manage on a single let whether it's HMOs you want to get involved in it might be um uh, supportive living it might be working tenants it might be service accommodation reach out and if we can help you with that kind of thing we absolutely will so as I said you know we've started now doing the social housing uh, purely because we found the right partner who aligns with our values and in fact we have a few of these houses being set up as as we speak now uh, which is quite exciting and we'll still we'll kind of test it how see how we get on with uh, with this whole thing now yeah yeah absolutely and you know this is a house that actually we don't own 
uh, it's a fact uh, of rent to rent so that means we're taking this property on on a lease that we have for a period of time and we're effectively then working with our partner uh, as we mentioned in terms of them delivering the care so it's, it's a rent to rent model now uh, how is it that we come across these properties and so that's a question that gets asked quite a lot you know just as I asked you just now if you've got a property in Birmingham reach out to us we might be able to help you we get people bringing these type of deals to us all the time and that's not by accident it's because we constantly ask and I encourage you to do the same thing and tell everybody what you do so people know what it is that you're looking for so when people are bringing these type of properties to us they say either can you manage it for us would you be interested in taking on on a long lease or you know whatever it might be actually most of the time we end up turning many of these properties away and the reason being because they're actually not of the right quality or standard for what we're looking for in terms of our HMOs however with these type of properties it means what we can do we can look at a budget so we worked out a budget with the uh, with the owner of the property in terms of how much they'll allocate towards the property we've agreed a fee with them on a five-year lease what they'll get paid and then our partners will deliver the service on them and we'll have a profit share with our partner on this particular project as we mentioned earlier there's a number of certificates that we need to put into place before the occupants can move in and before the property is signed off Idas you've got a list there we were looking at it earlier on when you run through what we've got yes I do <laughs> so it's actually nine certificates you guys need um, so we start with electrical so we need an electrical certificate we need emergency light reports uh, for that certificate the path testing so all the plants need to be path tested um, unless they're new to, uh, new appliance and you have the uh, receipts for them then uh, we need to do the fire risk assessment uh, we need the fire detection and alarm certificates as well in place EPC together with a gas safety certificate and a few other ones which is the asbestos report and the legionellus report so some of these reports actually when you're doing HMOs in the Birmingham Council aren't actually required um, like the asbestos legionellus reports but when it comes to social housing um, it is required to have them in place we've just stepped outside as the sun has come out as well otherwise it was a bit of a dull and miserable day with the rain that we had earlier on so if you've enjoyed this video and if you'd like us to come back and do another video once it's all finished make sure you pop it into the comment section below and as i said earlier if you like the video make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel enable the notification bell so you're notified when these videos are released and i look forward to seeing you again on the next video